This evening, first, expired goods alert. Vice President Jack Dio demands swift action against supermarkets selling expired products. Hear his personal account of encountering the alarming issue and what steps are being taken to protect consumers. Plus, cash grant controversy. The government slams claims by opposition parties about the $100,000 cash grant initiative. What's the truth behind the allegations? And how is the administration ensuring transparency? Also, Bartica raid breakthrough. A murder suspect is in custody. And unlicensed firearms have been seized after a dramatic police operation. We'll bring you the latest on this high-stake case. And parliamentary dispute dismissed. The High Court throws out an opposition bid to declare Vice President Jack Dio's parliamentary seat vacant. Find out why the case didn't hold up in court. Finally, rail strike disrupts France. Rail workers protest proposed budget cuts, claiming the restructuring will unfairly impact them. What does this mean for travelers and the country's economy? Stay tuned for these stories and more coming up on tonight's broadcast. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for November 22nd, 2024. I am Bibi Backus. Thank you for joining us. First up, Vice President Dr. Bart Jaglio has called for swift action to address the alarming rise in expired goods being sold in supermarkets and businesses in Guyana. Speaking at his weekly press conference on Thursday, Dr. Jaglio condemned the practice as dangerous and irresponsible, attributing it to the corruption and weak regulatory oversight. I've seen this happen. Too many businessmen are ripping people off by bringing in not just substandard goods, but goods that are near expiration date that they get for cheap. They're not selling the goods cheap here. They just bring them in so that their profit margins can be big, bigger. Citing a personal encounter, Dr. Jaglio shared an incident at a hotel where he found a soda bottle that had expired six months before being sold, underscoring the prevalence of the issue. I went to the Marriott. I found they had the, uh, a Pepsi there that was Coke that was expired. I think it's Pepsi. And I tasted it, I knew it's expired. They look at the bottom of the tin, it was to expire in a year, a year's time. So I said, this is impossible. I sent it to the analyst department. They found that it had expired six months before and it was restamped at the bottom. They track it down to a place on the East Coast that was, that was stamping this. A couple of days ago, uh, again, the same thing happened. The vice president's remarks follow reports of an increase in substandard and expired products flooding the market, raising concerns about public health and safety. Dr. Jaglio urged authorities to strengthen regulations and take decisive measures to protect consumers. In this report, Malcolm Carter tells us that the government condemned opposition claims of political bias in the $100,000 cash grant process, affirming transparency and fairness. The government of Guyana has strongly condemned what is described as a disinformation campaign by the People's National Congress Reform and the Working People's Alliance regarding the $100,000 cash grant initiative. In a statement, the government reaffirmed its commitment to safeguarding the registration process against fraud and misinformation. Vice President Dr. Barry Jaglio addressed the issue, criticizing press release issued by the PNCR and WPA on Wednesday as baseless and mischievous. The opposition parties alleged that registrants were being questioned about their voting history in the last general and regional elections. Every bit of information that we collect here is already on GCOM official list of electors up to June. APNU has the very information we're collecting now, but we want it verified. So we want to make sure that this person comes register, get a picture, and then you get their ID. So when we cut the check and they come to collect the check, we give it to the right person and the details, all the details are on the check. 
Dr. Jagio dismissed the claims as false and misleading, emphasizing the government's primary focus to ensure that the initiative benefits eligible individuals and remains free from political interference. He urged the public to disregard such misinformation and reiterated the government's dedication to transparency and fairness in the distribution of the cash grants. The $100,000 cash grant initiative aims to provide financial relief to households across Guyana, with the government assuring citizens of a smooth and impartial registration process. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. A coordinated police operation in Nagatash village, Bartika, led to the arrest of a murder suspect and the discovery of three unlicensed shotguns with ammunition on Thursday, November 21st. The operation, led by Senior Superintendent Dion Moore, targeted the residence of 71-year-old farmer Frederick Singh. During the raid, police arrested Hemra James, also known as Ricky or Sawman, a 55-year-old chainsaw operator wanted for the October 14, 2023 killing of Perry Budram at Granny Landing, Omai Bakdam. Under caution, James admitted to attacking Budram during an altercation that led to his death. A search of Singh's property uncovered three unlicensed shotguns, as well as six 12-gauge cartridges. Singh admitted to owning the firearm, claiming they were used for hunting. Both suspects were taken to the Bartika police station, where they remain in custody as investigations continue. Stick around for a return. Carnegie School of Home Economics celebrates 92 years with graduation ceremony and court dismisses opposition's case to declare Jagdeo's parliamentary seat vacant. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoo's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street, Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Ah! Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for doing surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. Oh. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fetters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, hot spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you who know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document planting flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil, we serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radhika went to the supermarket, and she probably buy up nothing of things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. It's shaped like a guy in a mouth. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Curry smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear.
Modern Optical Services, 360 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226 GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. It is the civic duty and legal responsibility of all persons who meet the eligibility requirements to apply for registration. By doing so, you will be ensuring that you are issued a national identification card and be included in the official lists of electors for future elections, providing you meet all eligibility criteria. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, contact GCOM on 2250-2779 or visit the website www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. The High Court has dismissed an application filed by opposition members of Parliament, Christopher Jones and Tabitha Sarabuheli, seeking to declare Vice President Bar Jagdio's parliamentary seat vacant due to his prolonged absence from the National Assembly. Justice Narishwar Haranan ruled that the application was premature, as the Speaker of the National Assembly had not yet deemed whether Jagdio's absence met the constitutional threshold for vacating a seat. Under Ghana's constitution, the Speaker must assess and confirm such findings before the matter can be escalated to the court. Jagdeo's attorney successfully argued that the court could not act without a prior determination by the Speaker. Attorney General Anil Nanlal and Speaker Manzur Nadir, also respondents in the case, supported this position. The opposition's legal team, led by senior counsel Royceel Ford, argued that Jagdeo had missed 11 consecutive parliamentary sittings between December of 2023 and February 2024, exceeding the limits stipulated by the Constitution. However, the court emphasized that only the Speaker could verify the act on such claims. The case was dismissed and the applicants were ordered to pay $250,000 in costs to each respondent by December 31, 2024. The Carnegie School of Home Economics celebrated its 92nd anniversary, graduating 114 students skilled in hospitality, cosmetology, and entrepreneurship. Malcolm Carter has more details. The Carnegie School of Home Economics marked its 92nd anniversary with a graduation ceremony for 114 students, celebrating nearly a century of excellence in education and training. Themed, Shaping Generations with Creativity and Skills, 92 Years of Transformation in Education and Training. The event highlighted the institution's legacy and its role in empowering individuals for workforce and entrepreneurship. Graduates received certificates and diplomas across diverse programs, including household management, garment making, interior decoration, general cosmetology, commercial food preparation, and catering and hospitality. Among the graduates were 13 public service ministry scholars and representatives from the Guyana Defense Force, Police Force, and Prison Service. Principal Dr. Charmaine Marshall emphasized the school's commitment to industry collaboration and student success, noting that many graduates secure employment or start businesses after completing internships. Director of the National Center for Educational Resource Development, Omar Ramdin, lauded the Carnegie School of Home Economics for advancing technical and vocational education and training, a cornerstone of Guyana's workforce development strategy. Founded in 1933, the Carnegie School of Home Economics has evolved to meet industry demands, producing skilled professionals and entrepreneurs in hospitality, garment construction, and cosmetology. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. Eight contracts totaling $100 million were signed this morning for the waterfront redevelopment of Linden and Wisma, marking a significant step towards transforming the mining town's riverfront. Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, who witnessed the signing, emphasized the project's local impact, highlighting its execution by Linden contractors for the benefit of the community. Minister of Public Works, Bishop Juan Edgehill, 
announced that 8 out of 15 bidding contractors secured the contracts. He assured that the remaining contractors would still participate in smaller projects to contribute to the area's overall enhancement. The initiative aims to revitalize the riverfront, boost economic activity, and improve Linden and Wismer's aesthetic appeal. Don't go away after the break. Philippines drug war, Duterte investigated for crimes against humanity, and Brazil police formally accused Bolsonaro of alleged coup plot. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing on a fall and fractured my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and poise cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document platinum flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radhika went to the supermarket, and she pop up by up nothing of things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Happy smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. GCOM is currently conducting a national registration exercise. Who can register? Anyone who will be 14 years or older by December 31, 2024, and is a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or is a citizen from a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for one year or more. Where to apply for registration? You are required to visit the registration office that is responsible for the registration of persons in your area of residence to apply for registration. Office hours, Monday to Thursday, 8 to 12 hours, 13 hours to 16 hours 30, and Friday from 8 to 12 hours and 13 to 15 hours 30. The offices will be closed on weekends and holidays. This registration exercise will end on November 29, 2024. For further information, contact the GCOM on 2250-2779 or visit the website www.gcom.org.gy. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Good evening. I'm Malcolm Carter and welcome to tonight's regional and international news. In the Caribbean, India has pledged extensive support to the Caribbean community during the second India CARICOM Summit in Guyana. Prime Minister Narendra Modi outlined a seven-pillar partnership to plan to address the region's challenges, including climate change, health and food security. Key initiatives include granting 1,000 technical training scholarships 
expanding Belize's technical development center for broader CARICOM access and promoting agricultural innovations like digital farming and millets, a climate-resilient superfood. India will also assist in combating non-communicable diseases and offer technology to repurpose innovative sargasm seaweed into fertilizer. Modi emphasized India's commitment to being a trustworthy partner in CARICOM's development and resilience. Meanwhile, former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro and 36 allies, including his former vice presidential candidate and ministers, have been indicted for allegedly plotting a coup after losing the 2022 election. Federal police accused the group of forming a criminal organization to maintain Bolsonaro's power despite his narrow defeat to Luis Inácio Lula da Silva. Bolsonaro denies the allegations, calling them creative and vowing to fight legally. The charges forwarded to prosecutors are to Bolsonaro's legal troubles, including tampering with COVID-19 records and involvement in selling Saudi jewelry. The investigation follows January 2020 riots by Bolsonaro supporters who rejected Lula's presidency. Internationally, rail workers in France have staged a one-day strike against plans to restructure parts of the National Rail Company. The government wants to cut the stage budget next year by $63 billion to plug the national deficit. But trade unions say workers will be hit the hardest. Al Jazeera's Natasha Butler reports. Workers protesting outside a station in Paris during a one-day strike, angry with the French government's plans to dismantle and privatize parts of France's national rail company. Trade unions said the walkout was a warning shot before possible rolling strikes in December. Freight services should be publicly owned. It's intolerable that private companies could come here and make profits. We disagree with the political choices and with privatizing some passenger services. It's an erosion of rights. Social tensions are rising in the country. Earlier this month, car and supermarket workers protested against job cuts. Farmers started demonstrating this week. Now public sector workers are preparing to join in. At a teachers' union meeting in Paris, members vote to take action. One day strikes are useless, so we want to strike until the government withdraws the reforms no one wants. And also, they've announced a 60 billion budget cut, so once again public services will be sacrificed. While the demands of workers from different sectors may vary, there is something that unites them all, a sense that their lives are getting harder and that French President Emmanuel Macron's government simply doesn't care about them. The French government's proposed a number of austerity measures it says are necessary to reduce France's deficit, but it's been a hard sell with some of the public. Since the yellow vest crisis six years ago, social tensions and anti-Macron sentiment have been simmering, says this analyst, and they could boil again. A lot of people consider this government as illegitimate, and since uh, Emmanuel Macron decided to dissolve the National Assembly at the beginning of summer, uh, they do consider that the government that is in place is not really the government that they voted for, and it's a kind of lame duck government, and therefore any decision like budget cuts is not likely to go well with public opinion. It's likely to be a difficult few weeks ahead in France with disruption in many areas from schools to transport. Workers say industrial action is the only way to be heard as pressure builds on a government facing a winter of discontent. Natasha Butler, Al Jazeera, Paris. Finally, the Justice Department in Philippines say it's begun investigating former President Rodrigo Duterte for crimes against humanity. Al Jazeera's Barnaby Lowe has this report. It's been seven years since Sarah Celis lost two of her sons, but she isn't ready to let go, not until the perpetrators are brought to justice. Both were accused of being involved with illegal drugs. Police said they shot them dead in self-defense, but Sarah insists they were murdered. Witnesses heard an officer say, not him, so they got the wrong person. Yet they shot my eldest son with his arms raised. Rights groups say as many as 30,000 drug suspects were killed in the so-called war on drugs by the administration of former President Rodrigo Duterte. But only nine police officers have been convicted so far. And Duterte had not been held to account until last month when he appeared before the Senate and said he gave police this order. Encourage the criminals to fight. 
encourage them to draw their guns. Duterte also said he ran a death squad when he was mayor and made no apology for the rampant killings. And because of these statements, the Department of Justice says it's formed a task force that will investigate Duterte for crimes against humanity. Past investigations have only involved low-level police officers, and only a handful of cases have been filed in court. Legal experts agree that there is enough to warrant the DOJ investigation. His statements are under oath, and there doesn't seem to be any kind of coercion. Uh, on his part, and I think they're all admissible whether it's going to be in, in the ICC or here in, in the local courts. Sarah welcomes efforts by the government of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., but she says she'd still rather Duterte answer to the International Criminal Court because she doesn't trust the Philippines justice system. It's just so hard for us to get justice. Duterte enjoys due process after his admissions, but my sons weren't given any. They were just killed. The government has rejected calls to cooperate with the ICC, but says it won't stop Interpol from arresting Duterte should the ICC issue a warrant. Barnabilo Al Jazeera, Manila. Thanks, Malcolm. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the Thread Weather Forecast. And that's it TV2 Headline News for this Friday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. We will be off for the weekend, but you can tune in on Monday at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other, and do have a wonderful weekend.